Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement guide. And this time we're getting it all in Minute of Islands. Uh, this is a really cool and chill puzzle adventure game developed by Studio Fizbin, published by Mixed Vision Digital, and it's usually available for £19.99 UK and US, but it's on sale frequently and has been as low as just £6 uh, and dollars, so always keep an eye out for El More Salo. <laughs> My Spanish is great, isn't it? Uh, anyway, we play as Mo, not Mo, because there's no E. We basically, we have to help these big, huge giants who have stopped working underground. Lazy gits going on strike because they don't get paid for all the hard work they do. Gah, that sounds familiar, doesn't it, UK? <laughs> Bloody Tories. Anyway, more go to save the day. As for achievements, the most part, for the most part anyway, they are quite straightforward and story related, but there are a few you will need to keep an eye out on, as uh, there are a just a few missable ones. But again, very, very easy. Timestamps and all that juicy stuff if needed to. Overall, because of the lack of being able to skip dialogue and cutscenes, this will take you between three to four hours. So, with that being said then, well, let's do it. So, as is the case in every single game, we're going to press new game to start. Just like Ding Dong Diddly Diaz from Flandorinos. Uh, no, right. Um, in terms of controls and everything, everything's very easy. Uh, left stick to move more. Um, press the A button and you're gonna, uh, to obviously interact with things. We have to find memories, sort of collectibles as well, but very easy. Um, the only, <laughs> the only disappointing thing I will say in this game is the fact that, as I said earlier, you cannot skip any dialogue or cutscenes, and there is quite a lot of it in this game. And that's not Momo talking, that's, uh, the narrator talking herself. She talks a lot in this game. Um, so, yeah... So obviously we'll be talking through a lot of these. Now, of course, these giants, they're, they're a lot more giant in real life. They don't look like squashed te Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And Ofla, bound by eternal purpose. And a girl named Mo. Moore has learned to sleep under the hissing tubes and the ever-humming chambers. The pumping cylinders give her comfort, the drumming of a job well done. Nothing startles her more than silence. So that's what Mo's been doing this whole time. She's been hiding in this underground bunker with her robot called Safran. Safran, huh? Uh, anyway, here we go then. Um, obviously, it'll tell you what to do, but it's very easy. You can press the left bumper as well to sprint or jog slightly. Uh, but go ahead, pick up the Omni stick, or the Omni switch, sorry, whatever it is. Basically, your magic stick. Way Harry Potter and stiff. Press the right trigger to draw it. Uh, if you hold the right trigger as well, um, and it'll obviously, if you press start here, it'll show you things which you've got in your inventory, which we don't, we won't be using anything in our inventory, uh, but head to the left and just uh, go up to the stairs, go into the ladder, sorry, to climb up them, so yeah, uh, left bumper to sprint, 
you got to hold, and eventually we'll get used to the mechanics of that, but you've got to hold. In order to use the Omni switch on certain things, you've got to hold the right trigger, and then press the B button, etc. And uh, we'll tell you right now. So, press the A button to jump. To climb up and down things, which we will be doing in this game a lot, you'll need to press up and A, so up and jump. And, you know, try and make it the first time, instead of being a wiener like me. Uh, smallest wiener on the planet. I'm just joking. Maybe. Hopefully. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. So, uh, press the B button, she'll automatically climb through there. But, yeah, so, again, we'll be doing a lot of jumping uh, up and climbing up and down. So, again, it's up or down, and then just press the jump button. Very easy. Oh, aren't we all taunted? I won't be able to grow a third nipple! That's my thing I'm taunted by. ...and replicated. But their strength, they selfishly keep. Despite all the wiring and the manufactured tubes, the engines are powered by physical force. but the kind that no mere human could ever muster. <laughs> Bruh, that is one big-ass giant. Uh, so, uh, he's pretty big, so we're going to try and reach him. So, head up, and then obviously, whenever you can see the sort of white bits on any uh, cliff edges or rock edges, obviously that means that you can climb up and climb down. Uh, so, this is where we're going to use the Omni switch for the first time. Saffron. And uh, Saffron, mate, he's just sleeping. To be fair, he has had enough of all of this uh, Tory government regime, and he wants out. This is him on strike. Properly, but nothing does without the engine. So as it turns out then, we're not using the Omni switch just yet, but we are going to use it in just a bit. So, climb up the ladder anyway. And we'll ding dong diddly our way to the left, and we can just cl jump up here and shimmy across. Uh, very easy. She's uh, <laughs> well, she's going to be the next uh, Assassin's Creed guy. Hopefully, um, you know Ubisoft actually make a decent uh, Assassin's Creed next. I mean, Va I mean Valhalla was was okay and good, but god damn, all of those collectibles. Jesus Christ, done you nothing, huh? Anyway. Once we just, we're going to keep climbing up, you know, very easy. If you can't manage to just jump sort of straight up, you'll just have to jump on it from a side. Very easy. Um, and then just head to the right. And again, obviously, this is uh, what we've been doing throughout basically a lot of this game. It's pretty much jumping, crawling, going up and down and power, doing all types of fun stuff. Man, and Maud does it all with her arms in her jacket. Incredible. So now we're going to use the Omni switch because we need to wake up this sleeping eye, and that that doesn't look like an eye, does it? So we need to do then press the press and hold the right trigger, and then press the B button at the same time. That will lock it in. Keep holding the right trigger. Always keep holding the right trigger, and then just keep spamming the B button here to crank it as well. So again, this will be uh, one of the main mechanics of the game. Then what we can do is jump up. Now uh, press the right and left trigger together. And, that, and she'll plug it in. So again, you've got to hold it in together until she plugs it straight in. And then, uh, with the left stick, you can move the probe. Yeah, boink! So straight up to the red bit. And then just keep spamming the B button to pump it. Louder! Pump it. Louder! And the... <laughs> vicarious, vicarious looking eye. Which kind of looked more like an eye from, you know, in your pants. Uh, opened up. But again, that's one of the main mechanics we're going to do. You're going to have to crank it, pump it, and spin it in. Yes! What a song. Right, once that's done, head to the right. And we go to a new area. Whoa, spooky. Uh, for now, just keep climbing up.
without the veil. The air is too toxic to breathe. And just as more feared, the vents have all shut. The poison is kept out, but so is the oxygen. Safan is slowly suffocating, and the other three may have it worse. Right, so once we are at the top then, um, we're going to come up to another sort of uh, puzzle mechanic which will happen a few times in the game. So, what we'll do, we need to draw and crank and do all that, so remember to hold the right trigger, press the B button to lock in, and whilst holding the right trigger, press B to uh, crank it a couple of times. Now, with these sort of orbs, do not touch them, so you've got to get past them without touching them. So just keep sprinting and hide behind here, and then quickly jump up to the right. And that will do. If you end up touching one of them, basically the puzzle just shuts down and you have to crank it in again and just do it again, that's all. So, uh, there's quite a few of those puzzles throughout the game, but they're not particularly hard. And even, again, even if you fail, like I did uh, quite a few times, um, again, you can just reset the puzzle by resetting the old cranky bank. So, the stickiness of the eyeball opens up and we are going into the green dandruffy snow. Yum, yum, delicious. It would have been the Delicious if it wasn't so poisonous, of course. Yeah. So, welcome to the outside world, where you you can breathe a little bit easier. Uh, I do apologise about this bit, for some reason my game went absolutely nuts, at, like literally nuts. Uh, so all you're doing, you're literally just heading down the ladder and you just keep on heading to the left. Um, and that's all it is, and eventually you will hit this scene with a completely it's dead it whale thing with a weird tongue. A with genital wart on his tongue for some reason. What the hell have you been licking in the sea, boy? Uh, seagulls, angry, evil-looking seagulls trying to eat it all. Um, but yes, yeah, so I, again, I think there was a problem there with my Elgato uh, HD60S card. Because uh, the game did go a bit nuts. It didn't go on nuts on screen for me, but for some reason, that's what happened. But yeah, so just climb down, go all the way to the left until you hit this big whale thing. And then just keep on heading to the left. Mmm, delicious guts. Well, I say keep heading to the left. Now we're going to climb up. And then keep heading to the left. So we're about to do some more cranky banky wanky. I mean, st stanky. So again, hopefully you sort of remember what to do by now. Just keep holding the right trigger. Press B and then spam B. And that'll open up this little portal here on the, on the bottom. Hold, uh, press and hold the right and left trigger at the same time. Move the probe with the left stick, of course, up to the top. It'll always show you where to go. And then press the B button. Down. Boom! 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 Until she or he is completely satisfied. And, well, stuff gets working again. Uh, well, and by stuff working again, it's our boat, homemade boat, with, for some reason, some weird tentacles that act as a bridge to get on the boat. So, okay, there's no problem. Right, all you gotta do is jump on and leave. We'll save our homes. More reassures herself. So, first achievement unlocks here called Onward. Um, now, these boat scenes, for the majority of this, probably I think about six or seven of these sort of boat scenes in the game. And a lot of them take a while in order to just get through the cutscene. So it does take a while. Uh, I've left it in, though. I've left the cutscenes in just so you can sort of keep up, hopefully. Um, and speaking of keeping up, hopefully I have paced the game well enough for you. Um, that even though if, I, if I'm not talking or whatever, that you can keep up and you're not having to pause the video too many times. Because we all know that's a pain in the old bundle boy, huh? Uh, but anyway... 
Enjoy the cutscene. Enjoy the poisonous green snow on your tongue. Yum yum. But um, for some reason, I don't know if it looks the same on your screen, but more from here with my little rendering screen, kind of looks like a Canadian. Uh, so we kind of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've got a... Jay, we've got a macker on the boat here. The hey, friends. Macker here. Coming back at you with another gad. I'm not your friend, buddy. I'm not your guy, friend. And, uh, you know, all the hilarious Canadian speeches. Right? Because uh, it's not just South Park, right? That's how all Canadians speak to each other, isn't it? Surely. I hope so. Despite all of its dangers, more frequently inhales the poison. An occupational hazard, she calls it. A sacrifice others weren't willing to make. A few violent coughs. A few eerie apparitions won't keep her from doing her job. After all, she is the bearer of the Omni-Switch. The island of Beva, once a bustling place, before the great exodus, now just a pile of broken things and abandoned ideas. The island hosts the purifiers guarding Safon's domain, and not much else anymore. So welcome to, uh, to the island of Bewa. Now, of course, it's actually pronounced Beva, but uh, if it was supposed to be pronounced Beva, they would have put two V's there huh? instead of two W's. I just joke in the UK uh, language stuff sucks. So, um, yeah, I'm about to be shouted at for that. Anyway, we can now begin. And any time you see the remember button here, this is, these are the collectibles in the game. And then what you got to do is just collect the floaty fish thing that flies around. A little bit of a cutscene will play out, and that will be that. Um, but that, like I said, we are going to have to collect every single memory in the game. Um, and this, again, for the most part, they are on the same path that you are. Others, you'll just have to go slightly out of your way, but of course, I'll let you know where, when we are, when we get there. So for now, we're going to keep heading up. So that should have been your first memory there out of 12 for the island of Bewa. The second one is here on the main path. So uh, right in this grassy area with a bunny and a dead green poison bunny. Hmm, protein. In her memories. And with that, we can just crack on. So uh, keep jumping up. That should be memory 2 out of 12. As you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, every time you collect a memory, uh, it will tell you how much you've got. So if you are missing one for some particular reason, just keep having a look around or um, have a look at the timestamps in the video and you'll be able to see which one you're missing. So here's our uncle's house. It's looking good-ish. Could do with a bit of a hose to it, but meh. Moore's heart skips a beat. Either the fungus got to him, or he is somewhere out there, fiddling with the pure. Well, if the fungus got to him, it looks like he's not going to be a fun guy anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fungus jokes. Uh, nobody's heard that one before, have they? <laughs> no. Right, uh, just keep jumping up for now. 
obviously heading to the right. Now, obviously, for a lot of the for a lot of the time, this game is literally just a case of head right, head left. Pretty obvious where the path is going, uh, but sometimes it can get confusing because there's, as you can see, jam jars, bridges, and all types of crud going on. Man, he's been busy while you've been stuck underground, starving. Right, so let's crack on again then. So, off to the right, of course, climbing up. And then just jump up and up and up. A lot, and as I said, a lot of cutscenes, a lot of dialogue in this game. I want to say a lot, I mean a lot. The machine looks intact. It is resting, waiting for a spark. But there's also a lot of walking to do, so let's do the walking stuff, huh? Right, so jump up and go through the uh, gate again. Uh, my Elgato card is having a bit of a nightmare there. Uh, head down the ladder, go to the left, and just keep on walking. Nice couple of uh, items here. Um, keep, jump up here, just on these sort of boards, and then you can jump up right next to this jam jar banner. Oh, that's very nice. Jump up, go to the right, jump up again, jump up again. And here is the next memory. Floating whale dolphin whale. Wolfin. Big plans. How people would come from far off lands. He spent all his fortune on his dream. All that's left is the rot in the jars. There we go. Tidy boys. Let's get out of here. So keep jumping down. Climb down. Uh, and we're going to push this barrel here to the left. So just push this all the way to the left. Until it collapses and... Oh, no! So, don't go down. We're going to jump across to the left right there. If you do fall down, you can just jump straight back up anyway. And here is one of the first purifiers. So, do the whole uh, drawing, locking it in and cranking it up. And then, of course, when the floor opens up there, remember, left left trigger and right trigger at the same time. Move the probe and press the B button to pump, pump, pump. Mm. Arnie would be proud. Of the pump you have produced. Mo dares to take a deep breath. The air still tastes foul, but the acrid poison is mostly gone. Two more to go. Ah, see, mate? Nice and easy look. We'll get through this game in no time at all. What are we, 23 minutes in? Couple of hours left. <laughs> right. We got this. Right, I'm actually trying to jump down there. That's what's happening. Uh, from here, we're going to go to the left. We're all done with this area now. No more green dandruff hitting you in the eyeballs like a poisonous snake. Uh, so just keep heading left and then down. Down the ladder. Clock, clock, clock. Down again. And this time, when we do eventually get down to the ground, we're going to go all the way to the right. We're going in Uncle Ben's house. If it's an Uncle Ben, don't don't tell him he's uh, don't tell him that Spider-Man's about. Uh, right, as we climb up, we're going to head just basically out to the right again, and we just keep going to the right and uh, climb up. Keep climbing up. You should be able to climb up there on the left. There we go, and just jump up again. Head to the right. Again, you can interact with these sort of eye icons for story stuff, but um, obviously we're not going to bother this time. Over on the right here, next to these rib bones, I bet they were delicious at one time, is another memory. It's authentic, her uncle would say, but he'd always dodge the question of whether the bones were from a whale or another large creature. So that should be memory number four out of twelve now. So, flying through it, boys. Right, head to the left, of course, and then we're going to jump back down. And drop back down, go to the right this time. And we're going to remember this part as well, right in the middle there, next to Scarecrow's uh, and some other stuff. Remember to catch the, uh, I mean, that fish. Now, the, the whole sort of fish, whatever's floating around, is going to be random for you, but it makes literally no difference, because you're always going to get the same scene, you're always going to collect the same memory. So, for me, that was a fish that looks like a... Um, well, when a woman goes to get stuff checked out and they stick, yeah, you know. Anyway, head to the right and down. Yeah, one of those clip things, which 
uh, look like one of the most uncomfortable things that a woman can go through, apart from periods and pregnancy and all types of other crap they got to deal with. All, all the power to you, women. Right, so, um, <laughs> head to the left. We men do have it easy, don't we? Uh, pull the lever. In fact, pulling a lever like that's probably the, the only painful thing that a man's got to go through if you do it wrong. Uh, drop down, pull, <laughs> pull this lever as well. Woo! And then uh, go down the ladder again. Don't know where my voice went then. Woo! Right, we're going to keep dropping down and down. Yeah, keep dropping down. So sometimes you try and drop down and you jump up and start climbing up. So that is very Ubisoft Assassin's Creed, isn't it? He didn't want kids sneaking around, breaking things, or adults stealing things. But more was always welcome here. More was family. You're damn right I'm family, dog. I have lived in this family for uh, however old I am. Right, uh, so again, uh, that's me trying to drop down. There we go, look. Right, you need to go to the other side of this boat first, so jump to the left of the boat. That's what I've been trying to do. And then we just need to push it um, pretty much uh, quite a way to the right. Roughly just after the sort of rope hanging up right there. So roughly about here. That is fine, just fine. So what you're going to do, we are going to uh, go to the right. We're going to push this thing off. And to be fair, Moore has some pretty uh, morific arms, whatever that means. Big strong girl. Uh, grab the anchor. What you're supposed to do is actually um, climb on there to the uh, platform that went up. But if you missed it like I did, you can just climb up, which is fine. Climb it up again. And as we head down to the left, oh, we're into new area. Press the B button here to turn this and open up the gate. More, more, more. How do you like me? How do you like me? Mo, mo, mo. Right, uh, as we head to the right then, we can remember right next to this bit of jam jam. Moore remembers the heat on her tongue and fingers as she snuck a taste of the steaming sweet sour jam. For weeks after, she'd carry a little teaspoon so she wouldn't have to wash her hands. And that's going to be memory five out of twelve as we head to the right once. Uh, six, sorry, got six, not five. Do apologise. So that's six out of twelve. We're going to turn the valve here to open up the gate again. So go ahead and do that one. Stick your arms back in your jacket and off you go. Uh, climbing up, climbing up again. Go to the left. Climb up, run up to the left. And here is our uncle. But we're going to remember just by this tr uh, big tree trunk first. Catch the old spermy whale, and remember, remember, the 18th of December. I don't know why, it's got to be someone's birthday, isn't it? Happy birthday! And what he meant until later, that things are only gone when they are forgotten. So, once more has remembered, <laughs> uh, we're going to the right. Um, we're actually going to start climbing up now, so head to the right again for more cutscenes. Protecting his property, as if a crowd might wander once again. Right, so we're going to climb up the ladder. There's a reason that uh, the one we're climbing up is locked, because there's a whole bunch of wine in that one. Don't want the alcoholics getting into that. Uh, so jump up, uh, jump up. What we're going to do, head to the right. We're going to drop down the first, though, and then climb up the other side, because obviously you can't get through. Jumping up, jumping up, and again... Uh, and we're going to remember, so before we climb up the ladder there, uh, press remember right here in order to get the eighth memory. The sounds and rhythms of the machine underneath the land. Her uncle always stayed the longest, watching her face light up the little dark holes inside. And there she blows, mate. Right, now we can climb up the ladder. So again, that should be memory eight out of twelve. Turn the valve, get through, and we're going to have a word with our uncle. Well, in just a moment, because for some reason he built this whole weird puzzle thing. I don't know why. 
to be a solution once more, before turning to dust. So jump as if your life depended on it, going to the left, climbing up a couple of ladders, and then basically all we got to do is pull this lever, I think it's three times until the obvious looking ladder on the windmill is pointing upwards where we can climb up. So pull, pull, pull. How do you like me? How do you like me? Not very much. I'll do, pig, that'll do. Right, off to the left now, once we've climbed the ladder, climb down the ladder. You can actually just fall off here and you'll just uh, stop on a gentle breeze, like a breeze on a summer's day. Uh, but anyway, just keep heading down. Uh, nothing else to do right now, but head down. Once we are down, uh, we finally get the chance to speak to our uncle with the big pig nose. Looks like a rhino pig nose underneath that. Then eventually we'll be able to do the whole cranky thing and, well, you know, hopefully you're used to that by now. Not machines. So for all his troubles, all his striving to fix the machine, it simply bore no fruit. <laughs> More frowns. Her frustration growing. She warned him not to toy with the machines. Moore's uncle huffs, disappointed at his niece's rudeness. For heaven's sake, was I meant to just watch as the poisonous dust slowly settled around my island? He was meant to stay inside and wait for her to be done. His heroics were simply unneeded. Everything is responding the way that it should. Looks like the old man didn't touch anything important. Relief washes over her uncle at the sight of her success. Feeling thankful and a little ashamed, he offers some seaberry wine as reconciliation. He hands over his key, a sign of his trust and asks her to fetch them a bottle of Ah, come on, more, bro. She's just, he, he was just trying to help, man. He doesn't want to be poisonless greened on. Anyway, he got that big COVID mask on. <laughs> Let's not get into that, shall we? Yeah, the people are gonna argue and go nuts. Uh, so we're gonna pull the lever here. Uh, it's more, more or less just a shortcut. Don't know why uh, Uncle COVID couldn't have just helped us out in the first place. Uh, drop down. Now, you... To move on, we're going to open this gate on the right. You can open the, the lock on the left if you want, but all that does is a, a bottle of wine pops out and that's it. It's got nothing to do with uh, the story or anything. Mo puts it back anyway, so... Right, we're going to drop down here and then go to the left, as you can see. And we are going to remember another thing and we've got a little Patrick Star going on. This was once Moore's little spot, her quiet haven on Bever's shores, where Moore could be herself and analyse the giants and their things as much as she desired. And another memory done, so let's crack on. Jump up, jump up and get down. No, we're, not. we're going to the right. Um, memory 9 out of 12, heading all the way to the right. Uh, some crabs and stuff. You know, nobody wants crabs, do they? Uh, we're going to climb up, so for now, just keep climbing up. 
And as we get to the very top, we're going to see memory number 10 out of 12. There it is, right at the top. Grab the jellyfish or whatever proverbial fish thing that is appearing on your screen, and this will be 10 out of 12. Moore thinks of the day that she left Beva. It was bittersweet, like burnt jam. Stuck to the pot. Right, mate, with memory 10 done, let's drop down. Go to the left, and we're going to, again... Uh, drop down here from the cannon, head to the right to go through the building, or just behind it, or whatever. On the right-hand side here is memory number 11 out of 12. Mole's feet scrape at the rocks where they'd both sit at low tide, eating her sister's catch of the day, grilled on the fire, and glazed with a tiny bit of the farmer's jam. The octopus was Mole's favourite, and Millie's too. And with that one done, we've got one more, and then we'll get the achievement for remembering Beva, or Bewa. So climb up here then, and then what we're going to do, we're going to go to the left, jump up here, and this is where the final memory is going to be for this chapter, or this uh, island anyway. So 12 out of 12, we'll get the remembering Beva achievement, and then all we're going to do is pull the lever and get up on the elevator. Until the day she reached a little too far. Her uncle always laughs as he retells the story of the proudest fish he caught, the mole. Pretty much could have climbed that herself, but that's all good. I suppose an elevator is easier, isn't it? Even if it's not quicker. Uh, so climb up now. And then we're going to go to the left, jump on the box, climb up again. Climb up. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Go to the right. I thought we'd be climbing up to the right there. And climb up again. Basically, it's going to be pretty much the big climbing section now until we get to the next machine. So we can see it on the left there, so obviously we're going to drop down. Um, uh, we're going to pull the lever here. Now, pretty much through quite a lot of this game, there'll just be points where I will be obviously just going on the main path, just trying to get to the next objective. So there will be some points where I won't be talking, pretty much because it's, it's not necessary. And again, hopefully I will have paced it well enough for you that you can follow along easy without having to pause the video too much. Uh, but as we drop down here, I'm just going to keep heading to the left. Uh, yeah, so, again, so it's going to start getting to a point where I'll just say it's a, a climbing up section or a climbing down section, and you should be able to just follow along easy enough. Um, but obviously it's just, well, I'll just save for now, isn't it? Right, up. And then we're going to climb up and up. And again, this be one climby sexo. I can take it, she whispers. I just need to keep moving. It's not my first time doing this.
A few violent coughs. A few well, that seems unfortunate, doesn't it? And now we end up in this vision of... Uh, this is the Little uh, Little Mermaid. The remake of the remake of the remastered remake. Uh, in about two or three years. So, uh, you will see a couple of these uh, sort of visions or whatever uh, throughout the game as well. It's the same sort of thing every time. So, we see like this bubble thing. We press the right trigger to call it. And usually three, but later on it'll be four of these. Again, random fish things will... Um, Escape from said bubble. So all you have to do here is do these in order. Uh, so they should be the same ones every single time. So we need to find the middle Patrick starfish, then the jellyfish, then the other one. Uh, whichever one it is, I can't remember. But yeah, it's not random, so it should all be the same. So what we're going to do here, we're going to climb up. Uh, if you do end up accidentally clicking the wrong one, basically it'll just start you back from the beginning. And you'll just have to um, catch them all again. So, there was the first one there on the right-hand side. The Patrick Star-looking slight star thing. And then we're going to jump up again. Go to the left. And go to the left. And miss the big spiky boy. So, try to avoid the big spiky boy. Like I just about did. Uh, again, if you do touch him, you'll just have to restart this little section again. It's absolutely fine. Otherwise, go to the right. And then eventually, Jellyfish will pop down. And now we can go and grab all spiky balls. Which is going to be uh, to the left and he should be just down here somewhere chilling. There he goes. Once you've grabbed him then. And again this will be the same thing every single time. Not random. So as soon as he's done this a, a key will start floating down which we can open up a treasure chest. <gasps> oh my god. And there's a leprechaun there. Who came up with that anyway? Oh, look, leprechauns are Irish, so they all must love gold. Eh? I, I don't know. If you're Irish, let me know if you do love gold. Although, I suppose everyone loves gold. Anyway, so we got the music box key. Yes, I think we're all gold members at heart, aren't we? Austin Powers. Uh, so just keep climbing up. It's basically in the top left-hand corner. So you just, or, or effectively, you just keep climbing up. Until we get to the music box and then press the B button to open it up. I'm okay, she tells herself, but it feels more real than ever. Someone is shouting. I'm okay, she replies. I'm okay. She lies. Ah, oh, cheers, mucker. You are, you am one top uncle, bro. So, he saves the day as we went into this vision. Uh, but yeah, so those visions, they will be the same every single time. They will not be random. Um, and uh, yeah, well, something else you can enjoy. <laughs> Are you sure that's unvoiced imitation or irritation, or is that something else? Hmm? You've been drinking that pineapple juice? Hmm? You've been drinking that drinky jinky? How she doesn't wear a mask, 
when she forces others to, how she poisons herself. He settles instead for just a few words of concern. Here's my few words of concern for you. <sniffs> Jog on. Uh, and if you didn't see me, which of course you can't, because you can't see me, I uh, stuck my two fingers up there. Jog on, bro. Right, keep climbing up. He smiles. Please come back. How do you know he's smiling? And don't forget. Uh, he's got his he's got his pig nose out. He, 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 you can't see if he's smiling. Don't lie to me, narrator woman. She right. To not hear him. Oh yeah, we've got to visit our sister. That's always nice. Right, so climbing up. Boan and Beva are cleansed, but the batteries won't last. It's time for Zafa to do his part. Right, I'll do again. So, we've cleaned everything up right there. Uh, so now we actually have to go all the way down back to Safal. Safal. Now, in fact, no, we're going to return to the boat and then go to Safal. Now, the, again, that's probably another problem with this game is... Like, eventually, there's quite a lot of uh, backtracking. We're just climbing down, by the way. We're literally just heading back down right now. Uh, pulling the lever, keep heading down. But if there, if there was the ability to skip dialogue and cutscenes, and if there was the ability to sort of fast travel to these places, um, I mean, I suppose the game wouldn't have been as long, but, you know, sometimes it, it, it does get a bit tedious towards the end. So we're jumping down, jumping back up. Heading down, and effectively now we're just heading to the left once we've climbed down everything. Yeah, so as we jump down here, just jump down. And then we are coming back up to the boat. Hooray! Oh, look at all that green poisonous jam of... Ew!
Yeah, like, do we really need to see Mo sailing around? I don't think so. <laughs> that part could have easily been avoided. Right, so, from here then, what we're going to do, we're going to jump down first. I'll just try that again. We need to jump down here. Uh, and obviously just keep jumping down. So, we're back on the sort of main island here with Saffron. So, again, what you're going to be doing is going to the right. And this time, my game didn't decide, my, well, my capture card didn't decide to screw it up. So, again, I apologise about earlier. Uh, but hopefully you found your way nicely, and we can find our way nicely back again. With the spores gone, the air is allowed back in, and so is she. So when we get back to the um, eye, which isn't an eye, that looks pretty much like anyone when we're, when we're turtle heading. Uh, hold the right trigger to draw it, to draw your Omni stick, and then you should be able to go through. <laughs> or if, uh, you know, you've had some dodgy food, then it's going to go the other way, isn't it? Um, but yeah, that's what that looks like. So if you ever wanted a graphic description of how a butt works, there it is. Incredible. Um... Because I assume you don't stick a mirror under your own butt to see how it works down there. Everybody knows, anyway. Honoured and bound her. That's not good. Now tasked to save them all. Right, so every time that we almost save someone, we get three new memories that when we come back, we get three new memories that we're going to find. So, uh, it's a little bit, just sort of more complicated, but what we're going to do is head down. We can, just go, we can just float down lovely and again to the right. Just drop down, and then just keep dropping down, 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 bing, 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 bing. and there we go. So, off to the left, and here we are. We are back in the control panel room, where all the squashed Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are chilling on the screen. Right, head down again. And then once we're down at the bottom, we're gonna start heading to the right. Right, right. Shimmy along, girl. Shimmy along, Mrs. Assassin's Creed Prince of Persia. God, I wish they'd make a new Prince of Persia game. Uh, but that's just me. Uh, climbing down the ladder. You know, we've got, we've had enough Assassin's Creed now. Uh, still nothing as, n nothing and nowhere near as good as the Desmond story and the Ezio trilogy will always remain the best one. Apart from Black Flag, that will also be the best one. Right, so, do the whole drawing, sticking, drawing, boring. But as we would be able to see, the floor is not working. And this, again, this is going to be the same in every one. It'll come up, no light, so uh, somehow fuses have blown. And we've got to sort that out again ourselves. Wake up, you lazy giant! Anyway, the suspicious looking eye, which is not an eye, will open up. And... We can start heading to the right for the first time. Hey, aren't we good? So let's head off to the right, of course, since there's nowhere else to go, literally. Ah, oh, hello, that is a big giant ball with a floating eye in it. Oh, thank you. I guess we figured that out ourselves where there was no light in the power ball thing. Right, let's go then. So remember, we we are going to be looking for three memories as well. So from here, we're just going to keep on heading to the right. Uh, no, we're not. We're jumping up. Sorry, not heading to the right because the door's not open. Uh, so jumping up and again, uh, we're going to head to the right. Press the B button to crawl through, and this is where the first out of three memories are for this particular section. The brothers may be old, but they are not immortal, and neither are you. What will be left of you when you're gone? Only dust 
and crumbling bones. Oh, that's rude. What did I ever do to you, Miss Narrator Lady? Um, apart from... I don't know. But anyway, for some reason, when we get memories in here, she hates us. So, you know, just keep that one in mind in case you're surprised. Right from here, then, we can just go to the left, drop down. Bloop. And uh, we're going to go down the ladder. Clip, clop, Jürgen Klopp. Jürgen Klopp's big book of excuses. Uh, keep heading down, again, down the ladder once more. And then down... And then down, and down, all the way down. And then we can go ahead, crawl through here to get memory two out of three. What do you think will happen when you leave? Who will take your place? You are staying right here. On these forsaken rocks you call a home. Well, pardon me, missus. I like my forsaken rocks. Ish. They do cut my they do cut when I try to walk across them, but still, good rocks. Right, so let's crack on, shall we? So just head to the right. I do jump up here, but I uh, didn't mean to do that. We're just gonna head to the right until the cutscene plays again. The fuses blew out. Of course. So, oh, of course, yes, the fuses. So these are what the fuses look like. And what we're going to do is climb up the ladder here. And go to the right a bit, drop down. And now what you can do is press the right trigger, of course, to draw your Omni switch. And we should now be able to push this big, massive, giant fuse. Push it all the way to the left. And voila, that's one out of two done. You are special to me. Ah, oh, somebody's heart just got a lot fuller. Right, climb up the ladder once more. We are done for this bit. And uh, we're going to climb it, climb the up. Let's look for that second disturbance in the force. Head to the right. Yeah. And back through the suspicious looking eyeball thing. Drop down the ladder. And just keep on doing the dropping down thing. So once we get to the bottom here then, we're going to go to the left. And then, effectively, what's going to happen now is we're going to drop all the way down to the bottom again. Go to the right to crawl through the, um... Well, it's a hole with pink, juicy stuff around it. Oh, what I, I literally don't know what it's supposed to be. But that is where we're going to find the third out of third memory for this area. A death sentence. That's what every plant brought down here will find. Things don't flower this deep underground. They wither. You can feel it yourself, can't you? Okay, damn it, I'm old. Yes, I can feel myself withering. Jesus Christ, as soon as you hit your 30s, I'm afraid to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that, um, yes, you start basically withering away. Hangovers become much worse, and everything just sucks. You do become a lot more pessimistic, uh, but it's all fun. It's uh, it's fun to do, sort of. Mm -hmm. Nah, just joking. Life isn't all that bad. Right, once you climb to the top, Head into the right this time, of course, because we do need to get that second fuse going. And here it is. So, we're going to draw the Omni Switch. Uh, give that a little push to the right. Just enough so you can climb up above you there. 
So, that'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Climb up. Drop down. And then push it all the way over to the left until the fuse is done. But we're not actually quite done yet. So before leaving, we need to, we, what we're going to do, draw the army stick, push it to the left. Because otherwise we're not going to be able to get out. So push it to the left again, just enough so that we can climb up to the ting bags uh, above us. Drop back down and push it to the right. And then we can escape mo with our lives. And when we finally get here, we can now do the whole power thing. So again, left trigger and right trigger to pop it in together, and then stick it square in Safan's head, and you'll be all like, hey, uh, I'm alive! I was taking a nap, damn it! And he probably won't be best pleased you've woken him up from his slumber. and relief. She saved Safan from a suffocating slumber, and Beva and Born from a poisonous death. Hooray! There he is, look. He's, uh, he's not on strike anymore. Apparently, he got a, a typical 1.1% uh, pay rise while the um, MPs and stuff take home another 300 grand. Ah... Just, uh, it's just fantastic, isn't it? Right, so basically we are... <laughs> right, enough, anyway, enough about that now. Uh, we're just basically heading out now. So all we're doing is climbing up and getting the hell out of here. Safan can't keep this up for long, not without his brothers. And from this point then, again, we just drop it down, all the way down, going to the left, and basically heading now back towards the boat. We have saved the day. God damn, we're fantastic. You deserve your ego trip, everybody. You're the best.
thought is pricking Moore's mind. Check on your sister, her uncle said. Despite the coming fight she can already see, the coming fight they always have, Moore will have to go home. Not just for Brother Bagan, but her sister Miri too. The foulness in the air kept Moore from being able to pinpoint the smell, but it's clear now that she has an extra passenger, a hidden creature, smelling of rotting prey and wet fur. Moore stares at the creature, assessing its glare. She won't start a fight. She has no time to nurse an injury. It's not even doing anything. It's just sitting around. Miri agreed to stay back home whenever more needed to go below. But more and more frequently, the only thing left at home are fights. Miri fails to grasp the importance of Moore's work. Who else could do the things her sister has to do? Instead of valuing Moore's sacrifice, Miri is just being a burden. So here we are then, ready for the next part of the chapter. Um, Canadian mole right there, or what should we call her? Should we call her, when she's on the boat anyway, because she looks Canadian, South Park Canadian, should we call her, instead of Maka, sh Maka 91, should we say Mocha 91? Eh, she's Canadian and Maka's Canadian and yeah, yeah, you get the joke, but I'm going to call her Mocha when she's on the boat anyway, I think it's a great name. So, uh, right, New Island, nine memories for us to collect, and for now, we're just going to head to the right. Uh, of course, because there is only one way to go, unless you want to go for a swim in the poisonous green deliciousness. Uh, right by this pumpkin stall, there is the first memory we're going to remember. Miri has been diligently growing crops ever since Mo could remember. No blight could take her down. She'd always start anew. There would be lines each month for the fresh harvest. Next, we are going to head, obviously, to the right again, and very quickly, we're going to see our sister, well, almost quickly, uh, climb up, and we're going to climb up again here. Uh, we do actually need to climb up to the right, and then we can just jump down to the left. Uh, we're going to climb the ladder, actually. Of course, of course. So, climb the ladder, and if when we head to the right, and do some more climbing. But, um... Oh, sorry, no, I thought there was another memory on the left there, but there's not. But now we're just going to head to the right. And the second memory is going to be appearing very, very soon. So as soon as we pull the lever, before heading down, the memory will be on your left-hand side. So as soon as the ladder's down, go to the left slightly. There's the next memory. Remember, remember. He's found small spots comforting. Young Mo would squeeze herself into little caves and find their hidden secrets. 
Few others are interested in such mundane mysteries. So memory theory is going to be quite quickly in our midst as well. So we're going to drop down, drop down to the right. And uh, what you're going to see is a chunky old KFC bird. There's a chicken. Here's the next memory. Which one are you? Paulo? Rudy? Maybe Juno? Milly named every chicken, but they all look the same to Mo. <laughs> Does the world have to end for you to come and visit me? Millie jokes at her younger sister, her sarcasm masking her disappointment. Millie tries to reach through and speaks earnestly. It's nice to see you more. I missed you. And she asks more to come in for stew. But as if unjustly charged for a crime, Moore defends herself, pushing Millie away. I only came to make sure that you're doing okay. Miri nods. She spent all morning trying to bring her animals inside. She reaches out once more to Moore. I can help you. I'll get ready, and I'll come too. No. Mo cuts her off. I'm quicker without you tagging along. I got this. You take care of your chickens. They used to be our chickens. Miri snaps in frustration. You used to care. What even am I to you? For more, it's just another confrontation on the island's surface. Another angry outburst from her irate sister, making more long for the calm and dark below. But for Miri, it is one more ill-fated attempt to get her sister back. If you leave now, I won't be here when you get back. I mean it this time. Oof, the blonde or blue hair. What are we going for? Or is that purple? Whatever color it is. Anyway, from here, what we're going to do is head all the way to the right-hand side. Uh, we're onto the beach now. I mean... You know, you can't, you can't pretty much relax here with all the green stuff going on and crabs trying to pinch at you all the time. But this is a chicken. This is one of the missable achievements that you can quite easily miss, actually. Uh, Fredolin, Mo eats. Uh, I meant recalls. So all you need to do then is literally start climbing up the ladder, or just jump up slightly, and then just keep heading to the left until Fredolin gets in its own uh, KFC bucket, and the achievement will unlock. What that also does is pop us another memory as well. So go back to Friedeling in his KFC bucket cage and make sure to grab the memory here before moving on. And you'll get the, the one that got away achievement as well. He will escape again, but he just needs his own space. More can sympathize with that. And before moving to the left, we're going to move to the right and we're going to climb up the ladder for another memory. Memories coming at you thicker and faster than an American loves a buffet. Yeah, I'm sorry. But it was still preferable to cutting your feet on the rocky beach again. So after this one is done, head left into the house and immediately there is going to be yet another memory. So this will be memory six out of nine. Miri retrained herself to play the cello after the fungus ate her arm. Moore never found the right moment to say how impressed she was. And after this one is done, head left into the kitchen for another memory. That'll be seven out of nine, this one. Hey. 
Moore remembers watching the stars streak across the sky, Millie's face lit by the moonlight, full of wonder, both wrapped up warm in their duvets, their shared silence saying everything they needed. And after this one is done, we're going to go left and up the ladder. So climb up the ladder here, and guess what in here? Another memoir. Moore and Miri had a system for the beds, but now Miri always sleeps on the top bunk. There we go, so that should now be eight out of nine memories for this part. So we can just climb down the ladder. Only one more left to get. Head to the left into the kitchen, and here is the ninth one. And that will also unlock the remembering the island that we're on, Hawaii. In the early hours, Mo would much rather sleep in and stuff herself with the sugary walnut cookies. So, with, uh, with that one done, 9 out of 9, you should get the remembering Hawaii, Hamer, whatever this place is called achievement. Uh, Hawaii is probably a little bit nicer than this. Otherwise, we can head to the left and head back down. Make sure to pull the lever right here, and that'll obviously knock this plank of wood down. Boink. I mean, you think it'd just be easier to keep it there all the time, but there we go. Who do I know? I'm not an expert at this. Moore can hear the silence under the island's crust. Machines aching. Begging her to fix them. I won't be here when you come back. I'll leave you on this forsaken piece of rock. How many times has Miri threatened to disappear, not once going through with her word? She always comes around in the end. For a moment, Moore regrets not going back to get her mask, but she's never been one for moving backwards. So it's another one of these vision things, and it'll just be, remember, it'll be the same thing as uh, what you will see on uh, my screen. So go to the right ever so slightly. You're going to press the right trigger when you see that floating bubble, and then, of course, we have to grab the particular animals in a particular order. Mm -hmm. 
So, foist things foist, let's head to the right. Obviously. Um, so, we are going to avoid the women, the, the woman clamping fish animal thing. We're going to push this seashell to the seashore on the right hand side. I mean, it's not really a seashore, but it's what it is. Uh, yeah. So, push it to this rock. Now we can jump on. Now, what you can see is the sort of shadows. Now, that is what you need to be concentrating on there. So that, we just collected the first one. So obviously the screen starts going up, but we concentrate then on the bottom of the screen. So you, uh, you are effectively playing as the shadow. So again, this is pretty much prevalent now for the rest of these vision sections. So push this all the way to the left, and then you're just going to do the same thing. So once you start um, climbing on the rocks, on the platforms, the screen will go up, and then you need to concentrate on the shadowy part, because that'll be you. The lighthouse that once brought travelers home, trade to these islands, and customers to the tavern, now stands still. Make way, make way, friend. A Canadian mocha is trying to get off the boat, eh? Sorry, by the way, if I just completely butchered uh, a Canadian accent there. As it turns out, I suck at doing a Canadian accent. Um, but, uh, yes, we are on to part two of chapter two, the island of Le Houser. Le Houser, Le Houser, or something or other. So, we do have two air purifiers to purify. Plus, we've got eight memories to get as well. So, well, let's crack on with them, huh? So, we can just drop down to the right, of course. And then, what we're going to do is jump up. Jump up again. And up and up and up. So, as we climb up here then, we're going to go to the right slightly. And here's our first out of eight memories for the island. <laughs> Before she left, the lightkeeper's wife loved to paint. Mo always admired her skill. Her things were left behind in haste, and he never touched them since. <gasps> Lovely job, mate. So, number one done, we're going to climb up and then go to the right and climb up again. Uh, heading to the right. And, ooh, spooky woods? Nah, nothing, mate. Uh, so, climb up. And again. The gate to the lighthouse. 
As long as Moore can remember, the Lightkeeper was always on duty, saving sailors from the sharp rocks surrounding these islands. But since the Great Exodus, he has been drowning, touching glasses with whatever phantoms are left at that watering hole. So there is an achievement tied to this section. It's basically, um, we're going to go to the right. We basically have to steal a key, open the gate, but we need to then return the key. So, and that'll get you the no thief achievement. Uh, so again, when we get the key, make sure to return it after we're done with it. Anyway, here's said elevator. Let's go back down for it. And then simply head to the right, and then start climbing down some. <laughs> and then when we do get to the very bottom, go left instead of right to find your next memory. A steep slope awaits inside the cave. Its ground was a friendly acquaintance to many drunk patrons. Two out of eight done. Congratulations, you are superb. Right, going to the right then, as we can see. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to keep going to the right, ignoring the lever for now. All the way, all the way, all the way. And crank it louder. I mean, you could pretty much be starving. You could pretty much just have some stew now and then crack on with it with a nice full tum-tum, but, well, then I suppose you'll want a nap and then you can't be asked to save the world and stuff, so uh, maybe not. Right, pull the lever, because we're about to get on the old Ellen Vanton. Tricky stuff coming up. We're gonna jump up on this platform and then head through the left-hand side door. And then what are we gonna see is old drunken man uh, just chilling. She well, chilling very drunk. So, um, this is where we are going to get the key. And remember, once we use it later, we're gonna come back and return the key. Very important for an achievement. Yep. Oh, whoopsie. If he remembers too. Yeah, he probably does remember. He does remember you and his son. That's why he became a drunk, because you've done his nothing. Uh, right, so talk to him, and then eventually we will get the um, the option here to pickpocket him or, or take his key. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And then we're going to head out. So pick it, the pocket of the packet of picks, and then we can get our nips. Down to the left and down the ladder. So that's what we're doing first. There is another memory here before we leave. Again, if you do end up missing this for, for whatever reason, we got to come back here anyway. For Moore and the Lightkeeper's boy, secretly nibbling at the reserves, blaming it on the mice. Don't head off just yet, though. Go to the right, and in this open cupboard is another memory. Ooh, hey. That's another one done. A pungent, bitter, earthy scent the little remaining proof of the cows that once roamed the islands.
once we got then all the way back to the top, we can go ahead and open up the valve for the first time. For the first time, and the only time. Because that's all we need. So we're going to turn it. And that will open up the gate lovely. Again, what she could have just done, uh, there's a couple of platforms and some bricks on the right. She could have literally just easily climbed over, but there we go. So remember, what we need to do now is go and give the key back. That's all we needed the key for. So... Again, just follow along with what I'm doing, and we're going to go ahead, give the key back to the guard. And as long as you've done that, the No Thief achievement will unlock when you have completed this part of the chapter. There we go, nice and sound, safe and snug, right in his butt pocket again. So, there you go, press B to return the key, and now we can head all the way back. And again, this is where a little fast travel option or something would have come in much more handy, but we are going all the way back to where we came to go through the gate this time. Couldn't we have just, like, left a little note and said, look, mate, when you wake up, I had to borrow your key, but there it is. Just would have saved a bit of time, wouldn't it? Well, you know where to go now. We're climbing up, 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 to get through that fancy gate thing, whatever it was. But of course, it's never as simple as that. I mean, okay, it is a bit more simpler this time around. So this is another little easy puzzle we've got to knock out, but first of all, slightly to the left is another memory. Jump! Jump higher, Willy! I mean, free Willy! A hole in the floor. Too big for one man to fill alone. A gaping maw. Slowly devouring both man and lighthouse. And still, he stubbornly refuses to accept anyone's help. Right, so that should be five out of eight for the memories. Now we can climb up this first ladder here. And then we're going to do a little jump across, which made no difference at all. So we're actually just going up to this left ladder, sorry. Um, I thought I could just make it. As it turns out, I couldn't. So pull the lever, and then that will drop uh, one elevator down. But again, not as simple as that just yet. So 
So once that's done then, um, what we're going to do, we are going to go to the right and jump across. If you make it, great. If not, well, just climb up this bit of ladder again. Climb up the next ladder here on the right. And then the next ladder. And then the next ladder. So we're going all the way to the top. What we're going to do then is just push this, again, incredible mega strength from this, uh, from Mr. Mo, or Mocha. So once that is in, what we're going to do is just drop back down to where the lever is. And then we're going to give that another pull. Okay, all right, all right. We're getting somewhere now. So jump across once again. Climb down the ladder this time. And then we are going to push this over to the left some. Climb back up the ladder. Jump across. Pull the lever again. Oh, we're playing Jenga. Right, up the ladder we go. Climb across. Bump. Go across a... Ah, well. Go across again, anyway. And then up again. And now what we can do is simply just jump across and straight into the door on the left. We get it, girls. Right, remember this one? Remember the memory. Number six this will be. A barbed nostalgia sharply tugs at Moore's heart. I forgot how much I missed the sky and stars. I forgot how much I like the sky, the sea, the sky, the sea. Right, number six done. Climbing up the ladder. And that's pretty much the puzzle done now, so that's effectively all good. Uh, just keep climbing up. And then what we're going to do is grab another memory here, just by the bed. Uh, jump on the bed to get it, because apparently Mo just can't get her arms out with a friggin' jacket. His wife wouldn't risk losing the boy to the blight, but he decided to remain this island's lightkeeper. Unable to bear losing what purpose he thought he had. So they set sail without a father. So, as I said, you should now be on memory 7 out of 8. So, once that one is done, just head to the left and out of it. Out of it, boys. Right, more climbing to do because we are now by the machine. Or pretty much close to it. First things first, what we're going to do is push this thing, which the seagull's on, off. Or the big seagull cage, whatever you want to call it. And then do the whole draw. All right, Woody. Alright, so now we can basically uh, return to our sister's island called Hawaii, or Hema, or Humi, or Halumi, whatever the hell you want to call it. So, now it is just a case of following the same path I take. We're basically just heading back down and towards the boat once more. And if you're wondering where the last memory is, it's actually on the way here. It's on the main path, so you can't miss it. There it is. Just in case we were like, hey, bruh, you screwed me out of another achievement, doucheberg. No, so there it is. That's nine out of nine. And after this one, and the achievement should unlock, now we can head back down and get back to the old anime, tentacly boat, whatever it is.
Moore takes in a final breath of Leusa's air. Much better. She congratulates herself. Now your chickens can come back out, sister. She does not expect gratitude from her sister, or an apology, but Maud does expect to be welcomed home. Now that the air is safe to breathe again, Miri must have calmed down and gone to make sure that the stew is still warm. Food is always her way of apologizing. Man, that seemed to go on forever. But anyway, uh, Mocha has uh, Mocha ninety two has made it off the boat, and uh, obviously this is the uh, island with your sister supposed to be on, and it's going to be all change in the range or something. Anyway, just keep following along for now uh, because there's only one path that we're going to basically take. So we're heading up this time, heading up to our sister's house. Looks a lot nicer than Uncle Pig Nose. Oh, wait a minute, mate, I forgot we were doing a burger's engine. Old uh, burger joint's engine first. So, duty and duty. Americans, by the way, why do you say duty? It's duty, or d duty. There's a T in there. Uh, sorry. It just always makes me laugh when you like duty, and it's funny, and it's like, yeah, duty. Right, so, jumping down, going to the left. You actually have to climb up so you can jump over, over to the left. And then continue to climb down. I'm just joking, Americans. The whole Britain versus American slang thing will never not be funny. Uh, shimmy across. And then, and obviously, like I said, when we climb down here, we do have another three memories to collect. So, just keep going to the right and down.
So there's the big boy burger joint himself. This uh, cave does seem a bit bigger. So don't head up yet. Go to the left and go down. And then go to the left again. And what we're going to see is the uh, first memory of three. Our little crawling through the butt snack section. you have squandered and misused for sentimental distractions. How will you make up for everything you have wasted? Tidy Bob Buff Pants. All done with that one. Right, so that's memory one out of three done. So, Back the way we came, straight up the ladder. And again, we do have to save Burger King right here. So this time we're going to jump up. And up and up and climbing up. And then off you do to the drawery thing. After all the delicious pleasantries are done, from here we're going to drop down by the big eyeball heart thing, whatever it's supposed to be. Drop down again and crawl through here for memory number two out of three. Dead things and frames. A petty attempt at preserving beauty. How can you occupy yourself with that? With the lives depending on you? So do you want to build a snowman? Or should we just carry on going down? Yeah, it's a good idea. Let's carry on going down. We don't want to build a friggin' snowman. So shut your goddamn mouth. So, go to the right, we're gonna draw, and we're gonna push. Let's push this thing. Again, incredibly, incredible biceps this uh, young little mocha has got. Uh, so again, just enough there so we think, uh, that we can jump up. And then we can just jump over and shimmy across to the other side, all the way to the other side this time. Drop down, go down the ladder. And again, just drop down until we hit the right-hand side, and this is where the drawing lockity doodah thing is. So of course, when we Prince of Persia Assassin's Creed style shimmy our way across, remember to go to the left side of the big thing, 
whatever this is. Drop down and then give it a draw and then draw your Omni Switch and then just push it on. But we actually have to push it out of the way because there's no way for us to get through. So, once that's all done, draw your Omni Switch. Give it a push. Eventually, there we go. And again, what, again just what you'll have to do is just go enough so that the uh, you can climb up the ladder. And then go to the right side of it and push it back to the left. So, we're going to climb up the ladder, and then we're going to head to the right. So, do not climb up the second ladder. Go to the right. And now we can climb up this ladder, since there's no other way to go, in all fairness. To the right again. And then we're actually going to jump up onto this platform. Go to the right to climb up the ladder. It's a long old way. When they got that ladder to heaven. Oh, where are you? So, what you need to do for this bit then, um, go to the left slightly, and what I'm trying to do is actually jump down. So, as you can see, right to, to, right where I'm trying to stand, that is where we get down, and now we can go to the right. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of confusion there, or something on my part. Or maybe a bit of idiocy, as uh, pretty much is the point usual. Right, once we climb up, we are now going to climb up the next ladder, and this is where the third out of three memories is for this area. And guess who just lied to you? This guy. This isn't the third out of three memories. I got a bit ahead of myself again there. Do apologize. Right, we're going to drop down. Do the whole drawery draw thing. In fact, no, we're not even doing that. I'm lying to you again. We're going to draw and actually, uh, we're going to draw the Omni Switch and push this fuse into the fuse box first. So we're just going to get that one out of the way. And then we can do the drawing thing and start messing around with this. Right, so it's another one of those puzzles then. This uh, next orb is going to fly fast. So again, it's just all about the timing. So obviously, as soon as it goes to the left uh, on the bottom, you can literally just make a break for it. So wait and wait. Now we're going to make a break for it. That should give you plenty of time to get through the other side. Again, if you fail, just uh, re-crank it and get your buns on this side, huns. Right, so from here then, I uh, couldn't jump up for some reason, but now we're going to the left. All the way to the left. And we're just going to do the whole yummy dropping down thing. So yes, in case you've gathered, we are coming up to another one of those light puzzles, which are going up and down. So again, it's more or less just timing. But uh, climb up the ladder, and obviously we're going to do the crank it louder. Right, so as you can see, it's just a case of going up and down, so just be careful. As soon as the next one goes, make a jump for it, and the next one, make a jump for it. Drop down, but stay here, don't go to the left. As soon as this one goes up, you can just safely drop down. So that's, again, that's not too bad. There's only one, really, that took a few tries, and that was, I think, one of the last ones. 
Um, but again, that's just all to do with timing. So, pushing this fuse over to the left-hand side. Kablamo. So this is where the third memory is. We climb down, we crawl through, so don't reawaken Burger King just yet, because we, this is where the third and final memory is. You are beyond these tools now, so primitive and human. You are the bearer of the Omni-Switch. But deep down, you know and understand. You are far from worthy of it. Man, this narrator lady is pissed when we get those memories in here. Well, I'm sorry, right? God damn it. Right, so, we have got all the memories. We, um, uh, we can now reawaken the king of burgers himself. So, now it is just a case of following me. And like I said, I, I know I've said it for a couple of times, but hopefully, as I said, the pacing is good enough and that you're following along nicely and lovely when I ain't yapping. So this time then we can just start heading down and instead of going onto the beach we are going to go up to our sisters who, remember she said, if you leave this time I mean it, I'm getting out of here mate. Can't look after his bloody chickens on my own. So she injected them with green stuff and then left. So head inside and a little bit of a cutscene is going to play out and we're going to grab this gemstone. Why would you just read the letter? Mocha, you are not being very nice right now. Dare to read it. 
What possible use could reading it have right now? It's all been said, not by the letter or its contents, but by the gemstone left behind. What possible use could it have? Uh, you know, just to see where your sister went, perhaps? That's probably one good thing. Uh, otherwise, we're not going to read it. We're just going to head out all the way to the left and back to the boat. Annoyed, Moore steals herself once more for the visions. These feverish dreams have never been so frequent, never been so hostile. So it'd be another one of these tricky little sections, except they're not that tricky. Uh, so the first one we are going to avoid, so here's the bubble. And I wonder what disgustingly beautiful fish monsters we have. We have Patrick Star, the woman, the, you know, the, the clip thing, and spiky spider looking thing. Uh, you know, people are probably going to tell me exactly what they are supposed to be, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll listen to that one. But until then, I don't know, so I'm just going to call them what I think they are actually, uh, what they actually look like. So, uh, we're going to jump up, we're going to avoid the first one. So we're going to avoid the whole, uh, clip monster thing. So try and avoid that if you can. And let's just carry on going to the right. Obviously, since, uh, they are both to the right, so that makes all the perfect sense. And here's going to be the first one then, the old Patrick Star Monster. So if you could, try not to jump down exactly like I done right there. And we'll try again. So it's going to pop around. There it is. So there's Patrick Star thing. Right, so now we can go to the left, collect the old, um... Uh, I'll just keep calling it a woman clip. Uh, you know, the uncomfortable woman clip. Yeesh. Yeah, and then we can obviously go to the right and collect the last one. Thank you. 
Mo hasn't seen her grandmother for a while now, but Granny would never make a scene about it. Yet Mo feels anxious stopping by. Not because she doesn't like her. She likes the old woman too much. So, welcome to the island of Memorfesti. Alright, alright, it's the party island, apparently. The party green island. Anyway, we've got to reawaken and find Ander. Plus, immediately on our right, we're going to get our first out of three memories. So, you know, memory it up. The deep waters around this island change colour every season. Teeming with life of the most curious creatures. And with that done, we can just continue to keep climbing up. And in fact, the memories in this island are going to come quite, uh, well, they're going to come thick and fast. So if we just keep climbing up, memory two shouldn't be too far away. <laughs> oh, God. oh, hilarity. Uh, oh, in fact, oh, wait, actually. <laughs> it's not too far away, but we have to speak to extremely tired uh, grandma right there. Man, she looks like she has had enough. <laughs> Broski just wants to live out her retirement in peace and not be poisoned every day. Fair one. She could have moved away, but she wasn't willing to concede a single inch. Hopefully, she hasn't blocked the valve with her morbid laboratory. Miri is not here, the old woman says, but that is not why you've come. Mo tries to tell her how dire it is, how Under and the others have succumbed, how she needs to do what must be done. But her grandmother merely smirks behind her mask. Now look at you, how important you've become. People are counting on you. Yes, yes. Another chuckle behind the air filter. I have something very important for you to do as well. Would you be so kind as to do me a favor? A favor, she calls it. It may as well be in order. Granny has always had her way of getting what she wants. Old companions, the grandmother says, that I have held on to quite long enough. So that's an achievement you can actually miss. You can just crack on with the story without grabbing the dolls off her. So make sure then to grab the dolls off her, uh, like I've just done right there. And then what we'll do, we'll go into the left of the house to grab the two memories and get the achievement. And then head all the way to the right in order to put the dolls down on some, um, you know, Dead people's crypts. Sound. Uh, that will also get us another achievement. So effectively, the four granny achievements starts now, more or less. But anyway, head into the house on the left first. Uh, we are just going to grab two little memories. Grandma was never interested in anything made by the giants. Lifeless metals and cold steel, she called it. She preferred spending time with the fungus breeding colourful, voracious new strains. Moore had always looked up to her grandmother, 
devoting her hours to caring for the dead and the living alike, an enigmatic and stubborn woman who was far smarter than many assumed. Nice and quick. It's exactly what we want, isn't it? So we can head out to the right. And now what we're going to do is head all the way to the right. You're going to be going over a bridge and you're going to go back into one of those visions with the weird random monsters that you got to collect. Well, you know, you know one of those. Has never fully crossed. The walk always seemed too long. And what lies beyond is what she dreads most. Just the one. Disrespect for the dead. If it saves the living. Moore's hand clutches the gemstone in her pocket, left behind by her older sister. Her heart is drowning in a deluge of goodbyes, all of them equally real. In Miri's unread letter. That old hag! Man, this uh, this narrator's getting worse and worse. Anyway, ignore the narrator. We're going to go... Still continue on to the right um, to sort out our old hag's problem. Grandma's problem. Sorry. Moore expected Kaba to be swallowed by the spores, so this episode comes as no surprise. However, she did not expect to feel so at home here.
Kaaba, where we bring our dead, where we surrender their bodies to the blight, a place too virulent to visit, so we mourn at home over sculpted effigies. So, I believe, out of respect, um, we, we, we're gonna have to put our Omni switch down for whatever particular reason, so you'll need to jump down here, go to the right and pop your Omni switch down, um, the giant machines are not welcome in these hallowed grounds. I mean, to be fair, there's no security guards or anything, so who's gonna check? Got any security cameras? What are, what are the dead people gonna do? Are they gonna rise up and tell me off? <laughs> anyway, we still do as the crypt thing is told. Put our Omni switch down and go. And in all honesty, if I was to die and be buried in a place like this, I'd welcome it. Look at it. It's quite quite pretty, actually. Which I suppose if there are going to be visitors visiting the grave you'll want it to be. So, yeah, I can see why. So, what's going to happen in this part then? Obviously, there's going to be a lot of climbing up and down. Um, but we have to basically visit three crypts. And obviously, the fourth one is where we'll be able to drop off Granny's things. Even though you could probably just leave them in some of the flower pots and say, Right, here you go, Gran, all done. I've got to go ahead and try and save the island now, if that's all right. So, let us begin, and head to the right, and head to the down, boop, straight down, and ignore the first ladder, we are going to do this crypt puzzle first. Now, for the left valve, we're going to turn that one three times, so turn this left valve three times. The middle valve we're going to turn twice, so this middle valve right here, we're going to turn this one twice. And the right hand valve we are going to turn once, so we're going to turn this once, and that will complete the puzzle, job done. So now we can just jump up to our right, pull the lever, and ta-da, it's a winner. Man, of course it came from four directions, because it couldn't just be one direction, could it? 
no, terrible. Right, jump down ahead of the left. And this will be the first crypt that we're going to go into. There's no memories or anything to collect in here. It's simply a case of finding all the crypts. And obviously the last one being ours, which is just typical, really. Uh, so just keep dropping down the ladder. And to be fair, like I said, it's a nice little crypt to be buried in. But if we head to the left, uh, we can press B to examine it. Little cutscene will play out. And obviously we'll go, oh, wait, somebody else's family's buried here. I mean, Gran's not going to know, man. She could barely stand up. Moore was too small to fully understand what was happening during the exodus, but she saw what the poison was doing to the people around her, plaguing the mind with visions, corroding and eating the flesh. She couldn't bear to watch person after person disappear from her life, so she hid in the networks below. Far away from it all, she never found out exactly who succumbed to the poison and who made it off the island but it barely matters to her when they're all still gone. Right, but of course we're going to keep our promise. Uh, there's no place for the figures here. I mean, looking around, there's probably quite a few places uh, you can put the figurines. But, you know, what do I know? I'm not a crypt person thing. All right, so, th one down, three go. So, head to the right, jump up here. And we're going to keep on going to the right, so don't jump up just yet. We're going to continue right. And now we're going to jump down a couple of times and into the next crypt. And just do the same thing. Head down, float down, la la la. And do the whole crypt thing and watch the cutscene and then there'll be two to go. Most of Maul's family is still here, however. They couldn't leave their little Maul behind. She is proud now to have been tasked to protect them, by virtue of the knowledge and power she found. For when she went below and found the fabled giants, when she befriended them as the only human in generations, they forged the Omni-Switch for her and made her their apprentice. She spent years confined in the underbelly of these islands, just so the surface could shine. She hopes her family is proud as well. Now, just have a look at the, how this giant has died. What's sticking out of his eyes? It kind of looked like erections, huh? Now, I'm not being funny, but if I died with erections coming out my eyes, I would probably be smiling laughing too. That sounds like a fun way to go, sort of. I mean, if you've watched a scary movie where, uh, you know, Ray goes into the bathroom and he gets something stuck in his ear in the cinema toilet. Yeah, you, if you've seen the movie, you'll know. Probably a painful way to go, actually, so never mind. So, heading up. Now we've got one more crypt to go before we finally hit the right one. God damn it, Mo. Uh, so, jump up, jump up. And we're going to go to the right to jump up a few more times. And this time, we are going to jump up again. And it's effectively, you know, effectively it's two in the bottom and two in the right. Now, when I went through it the first time, when I went through this section the first time, I tried going straight for the left one, and it just wouldn't work. So you actually have to go through three first in order to progress the story to get to the last one. So, yeah. Apparently, don't even bother trying. <laughs> you can't shortcut this game at all.
The brothers once walked the surface. Many say they built the world with their hands. They were inventors and explorers, never minding the tiny humans between their feet, living in their tiny houses and tiny streets. When the blight first came and humanity fell into ruin, they went underground to find a solution. Their ingenuity and their toil saved the world above, but also bound them in the deep below. Would you look at that? One more crypt to visit. That's nice. That's uh, fortunate, isn't it? Right, so we'll jump up then. Uh, basically, we're just going to head all the way to the left. And that'll be the crypt that we finally can put these damn figures in. I mean, uh, you know, rip and stuff. Rip, rip everyone. Miri has two figurines in her home, a recent addition, but she has not told Mo who she is mourning. Miri has told Mo that she has a figure ready for her too, just in case. How many times has Miri thought of taking that figure here? All the times Mo would disappear below. All the times Mo was gone for months without contact. Miri not knowing each time whether her little sister would come up again. Not knowing for months whether the catacombs or the blight had finally taken more for good. Granny's decided that she's grieved enough. Uh, by the way, I didn't mean uh, rip everyone, of course. I'm not an evil Thanos or anything like that. Uh, I don't wish half of the world or all of the world to disappear. Uh, I just meant rip everyone in the game. Uh, so, there we go then. We do get the achievement for uh, doing what we promised for Gran Gran. Jojo and Gran Gran. Uh, so now we can head basically down into the middle, middle of the sort of area and head straight back out to the left. To crack on with the game. Now, I'm not sure if the, and in fact, I'm pretty sure it doesn't make a difference to the story's end. So, um, if you were wondering, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. But if you want to, yeah, well, you'll have to play through another <laughs> over two and a half hours to get to this point again. Uh, so, it's up to you. Otherwise, what we're going to do now is head back to the left. We're going to have to do that whole vision thing one more time. And then we are free of those. This promise she has now fulfilled.
She knows she has a pressing task to finish, the one in the physical world. But maybe, in this place, where time has no meaning, she can stay for a moment and rest. So as we start this one, we're going to avoid the first one. So, uh, so this first one's coming up right now. So we are going to try and avoid spiky ball right here. Make sure that you are avoiding spikiness. And then we are going to be collecting the second one, which is going to be right yeah. So the old, uh, you know, UWC. By the way, I know what they're used for, but I don't want to sort of explain it. Uh, women know what it's used for anyway. So we grab that first one, so we'll head back to the right. Again, ignoring old spiky ball for the time being until we can jump up. So once we jump up here, again, obviously, your view now will be at the bottom. So... Controls will change slightly. There you go. Pick old spiky balls up. Now we're going to miss the sort of Patrick Star looking one. And the way to do that is to actually climb up onto the platforms and then wait until he goes to the left. So we'll just... And f these fish monsters are damn creepy, actually. Every time you go past one, like, uh, excuse me, could you stop staring at me? Anyway... Here it is then, because it's on the ground, as you can see, you can't just run past it, because it'll be the wrong one. So we need to jump up, wait until it goes to the left, and then carry on. So again, obviously, if you do end up um, accidentally clicking that one, and it resets, you'll just have to do it, just have to do it again, that's all. Uh, so there we go, then, we're going to grab this old cheeky whale dolphin thing. Uh, that's probably a whale, right? And then we can go back to the left, and grab the last one. So I'm not sure if this is a bug in the game, but basically, obviously, we have to head all the way to the right to grab the music key box. But one of the Patrick Star monster thing is right here. Um, so for whatever particular reason, I didn't think it would be there. But since it is, I do collect it, but it doesn't make a difference. We can just keep heading all the way to the right to grab the music key box since we've already got the music key. Uh, but just jump over again since it keeps putting us back to the beginning for some reason. So I'm pretty sure that achievement there for remembering Miri's song is uh, unmissable since we've got to collect all the notes uh, anyway. And even if you get one wrong, you can just 
do it again and put it in the right order. So I'm pretty sure that one is unmissable. Uh, otherwise, what we can do now is head all the way to the left. Uh, uh, you're going to speak to Granny Grands, old Jojo and Gran Gran, but then we can finally crack on and save Andy. Ander. Andy. Hmm. Moore's grandmother says, thank you, and asks for one more favour. Would you sit with this old woman and listen to the birds and the water? Granny remembers how people from far away would visit Beva and Leuza to have a few days of peace, a few days of nothing but islands, and how lucky little Moore was to have a lifetime of it before the exodus. Before her calling, Moore responds she only has a minute, but her grandmother smiles, patting the empty seat beside her. Then, a minute of islands will do. taste of stale air is even stronger here. Enough distractions. It's time to wake so, up. So, let's do this, man. Right, so, another three memories we have to collect, but these are going to be the final three memories that we'll grab in the game. So, for now, we're just going to keep heading down. We are going to find Mr. Prime Minister. Andy. What's the good word, mates? Um, yeah. So, just keep going down, shuffling along. So there is Mr. Prime Minister himself, um, but he's looking like he's had one or two cans of Fosters. Because apparently that's all Australians drink is Fosters. Uh, <laughs> according to a survey that I've seen on Facebook, on the Simpsons Memes Facebook group. Uh, anyway, we're going to head up now, and obviously we'll do what we've done for the uh, two giant monsters. We'll try and waken them up, but it ain't going to happen.
Under, the giant slumbering beneath Memophesti, is the oldest of the four brothers. Older not by years, but by centuries. A fitting guardian for the islands of the dead. His throat making no sound, his chest frozen in place. Oh no, the power's gone off. Who could have seen that one coming? Man, just let the dude sleep now, huh? He's centuries older. He's like three or four hundred years older than his brothers. Bruh. Come on, let the dude rest. Look at his eyes, man. He's just... He's had enough. He's done. Right then. So, let us do this one again. Let's drop down. Ah, floaty, floaty. That'd be a nice easy way to get around, wouldn't it? Right, so with that one done, let's go and try and save the rest of these squashed Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So let's head to the right. Here is the heart once more. And we've got a bit more climbing and everything to do. Now, you'd think we'll just go straight for that one, wouldn't you? But we're not going to. Um, because we've got uh, quite a little bit to do in the deep, deep underground. So let's head down first. And continue to head down. So we will continue to head down to the left, boop, and we are going to be doing a puzzle. Now this is the last of these sort of um, spinning orb puzzles. Uh, we're going to head to the right first uh, as we climb up and climb up again. This is actually going to be the first of the three memories that we're going to grab before. And then we're going to do that last final orb puzzle and uh, that's it, yay! What good is a dress to you? Who would even look at you? Amidst the dimmed lights of the machines, you would only dirty it. Excuse me, Mrs. Lady. I think I would look pretty damn good in a dress, actually. I've got the cleavage for it, at least, personally for me, which, uh... don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> we'll talk more about my cleavage later. So for now, like I said, what we're going to do, we're going to head down now, and that'll be the first out of three memories. We're going to now shimmy across, or, you know, apparently jump down, and then shimmy across all the way to the left. Shimmy, 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 shimmy all day long. Right, now for this puzzle, obviously we know what to do, draw and everything here, uh, but this one is kind of a fast one, so we have to obviously time it, but be quick at it as well. <clears throat> so, when... We're going to shimmy across as soon as it goes to the right. Stay here. And as soon as it's at the bottom, go. We're going to drop down. We're going to wait. Wait until the one on the left is gone. So now drop down. Wait here. Now as soon as it's gone, run. Run and don't look back. And you should just about make it. So uh, that one may take one or, you know, one or two tries to do there. It took me a couple of attempts to do just to get the timing down. But that's how you do that one. You've got to be quick there. So, once we've just headed all the way to the bottom, we are now going to climb up, and climb up the ladder here, because this is where the fuse box is. So, push it slightly to the right, just enough again so that we can climb up, 
and then head over it and drop down and push it all the way to the left into El Fuso. Hooray! Right, moving on then. So, jumping up, and uh, we're just going to uh, stick our Omni switch right in the hole right there and give it a good old cranky crank twist. So, as we climb up, uh, we're not going to go up the ladder here. We're going to continue to the right, so make sure to do that one. Uh, we'll drop down. And more scenes of cutnesses. Well, sort of, anyway. And again, we can just drop down. We're going to head to the left this time. And drop down once again. And hello, what's this? It's crawling through time once again. Stories and romanticisms. Tales of great heroes. You wish you were a hero. But all you have is martyrdom. Mia, I still don't know what she's picking on us for. Uh, so anyway, that'll be memory two or three. One more to go for the contemplant Banner Managist achievement, whatever it's called. So heading to the right. And from here, we uh, can continue to head to the right. And right, and now we're going to climb up this little ladder right here. Right here. Jump up and shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Crawl through, but this is not the final memory. Push it with your mighty biceps. And give it a little kick for good measure as well. So once that fuse is down, we can now just go to the left of it, press the right trigger, and that'll sort of just go like magic. If we could magically stand it up, can't we just magically put it in the fuse box without pushing it ourselves and knackering ourselves out? Apparently not. But anyway, there, there's that one in. So we're going to climb up the ladder again. We obviously need to turn the power on. So up we go and up we go. So, this is where the final memory is, uh, so when we have crawled through the disgustingness, or whatever that is, we're going to head down, so just continue to head down until we're all the way at the bottom, there it is, crawl through, that will be your final memory of the game, and the contemplate achievement will unlock. They say your youth was taken from you. But think of the years of good you could have done. If the Omni Switch had found you earlier. So, that'll do. The compartmentalized achievement will unlock. That's what I said earlier, wasn't it? That's exactly what I said, yeah. Oh, I think I might have got a, just a bit of autocorrect out of the mouth. Man, uh, that's how much texting we all do these days. We're starting to get autocorrect out of the mouth. Uh, it just changed it automatically. So anyway, that'll be the last memory. The achievement should have unlocked for you. And now we can just carry on and finish this. We do have about 40 minutes left. 
which honestly, most of it is pretty much cutscenes after this part, so... Uh, starting to get there, the final stretch of the way. So, let us climb back down the ladder now. We Remember, we have to turn the fuse box back on. So we need to turn the fuse power back on. So, dropping down, down, hello Mr. Brown. Um, and what we're going to do, we're actually going to push this one out of the way. So we need to push the fuse out of the way. Effectively, once again, obviously just to climb over it so we can turn it on. So, push, push, mighty steed. Jump up. Obviously jump down. Well, after we lock it in anyway, let's turn the power on. Then we can drop down, push it to the left, and that's done. So remember, because Andy is about six million years older, he's centuries older, uh, when we do this, we're going to have to give him a good couple of pumps, about nine pumps to the head. So, uh, I mean, realistically, you'd sort of just rather leave him alone, wouldn't you? But uh, no, <laughs> we need to try and keep him awake. Nothing but a spasm. Pathetic. Try harder. Again. Again. is as good as dead. Oh man, Andy does not look good. Jesus, he's just... He's looking at her with... He's looking at Mole with disdain. Like, really? You woke me up from my death slumber? Thanks very much. Uh, right, so let's head all the way back down. We are done with Andy. We've saved him. I don't think he wanted to be saved that much, by the way. But, um, well, we've done it anyway. 
And we are going to come up to now to the final stretch, the last chapter that we're going to endure and enjoy. Your grandmother, Miri. What help have they been? Whining to your face, talking behind your back. They secretly want you to fail. Maybe their pleas of concern. We're driven by ill will all this time. You are alone in this. You always were. And maybe it's better that way. The rusty husks scrape against her boat, years of flotsam and jetsam, seeking vengeance to the boats that dare tread around Adi. When the blight first came, people began to panic. Unsure of the future, they planned to flee instead of fighting the poison. 
but the mist is as deadly on the open sea as it is on land, deceiving countless sailors into steering their vessels back to these shores. So, when I said we got the final three memories earlier on, once again, I lied. Sorry, I've done that a few times in this, guys. Um, I do apologise, but we do have three more that we're just going to grab on this island, and they're effectively all in the same place, so you can't miss them, you can't really go wrong. Fenya to Fayon. A paper saviour of boats, or risk being devoured by the iron shards between here and Fayon. So just keep heading over all the way over to the right for now, and this is where the first memory is. This boat floated back years ago, shredded to pieces. The feeble wood was no match for the edged steel. We never did find out who tried to leave with it. And with that done, we can now go to the left, climb up here. And the second memory is going to be not too far. In fact, it's right here, next to the ladder. This submarine never left the docks. The owner's son and wife had succumbed to the blight before they could even pack their bags. And the owner found no strength to move on in her heart. And then we can drop down here, go to the left, before climbing up, this is where the last memory is. Now we'll get the achievement, and that is the final memory of the game this time. I swear down. When people still cared about wealth. Fenya's incredible talent spent on building an ark? She is preparing for your failure. The jealous roach is counting on it. Imagine, your family lost in the mist. On this useless piece of junk. So it appears that Dr. Robotnik from the Sonic games and series and films has decided to uh, uh, make a Easter Egg Man appearance. I <laughs> know uh, it's not Dr. Eggman, but uh, yeah, that hairdo definitely looks more Dr. Eggman. Like he's just taken off half of his mustache and stuck it on a head. Anyway, hello Dr. Rob. Every single coward before you. Fenya has heard it all before. The accusations of envy and sabotage. How the Ark's mere existence is an insult to Moore. But she won't respond. Not anymore. She just does what she can.
Moore can't have the map for herself. How would Fenya guide the Ark to safe waters without it? Fenya gathers all the composure she can muster for a response. Your arrogance is clouding your judgment, bearer of the Omni Switch. Scorn and worry are woven into every word of Fenya's accusations. Saving this world is too big a task. Even for you, this Ark is your family's only chance. Go home. Be with them. And Mo gets really angry right here because we're going to give Dr. <laughs> Dr. Half Eggman um, a, a, a crack to the noggin and break our Omni switch and overall just be a douchebag. We are becoming El Ducho. Like, mate, come on. Jesus. Right, now it's the time for the two T's. T take the book and t time to leave. Although I suppose that's four T's if you're, you know, being uh, specific. Check the map again. Fion is supposed to be here. But it's just scraps and junk. This map is useless. That roach is useless. It is sunk too deep to be reached. This whole rotten island is against you. And you deserve it. 
Afla is already gone. And you know it. So we are now on the search for Afla Moreo. Yeah, see, get it? Alpha Romeo, Afla Moreo. <laughs> yeah, well, it's the, the joke really there's a bit. Um, so we do have, what, do 18 know? minutes left now? Lovely stuff. So we are coming up to the last stretch. Let's find Afla Moreo and save the day again. So there's no memories or anything to collect. Like I said, we've done that earlier. It's all done. Uh, so we are just following the linear path. And it's all going to go well, I promise. They're right to hate you. In the end, everybody will leave you. And you know why. In the end, what have you done to deserve their gratitude? Nothing. Pretender. Fraud. Child. The brothers should never have trusted you with the Omni-Switch. You were never strong enough to wield it. Useless. Might as well end the charade now. And throw yourself into the sea. Damn, son, that is a uh, that 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 looks like a very painful way to go there for Mr. Waylow. He thought he was a fish, turns out it was one giant log. Hmm. Smells like uh <laughs> smells like armpits here for some reason. I don't know why. You know, death armpits uh, as it were.
Oh, wait, the death armpits was uh, me. Uh, burb, I'm just going for a shower. <laughs> just joking, I smell fantastic. It was the death whales. And here we go then, the final one before we can save Aflamoreo. Yes! Then again, maybe not, because there he is. Now, this is one brother that has not made it. Drowned, even though he could still breathe a little bit. I don't get why he drowned, but anyway. He's drowned. Aflamoreo is deader than a dead thing in Dead Space 2. Which is a lot of dead in that game. Um, so, yeah. It's not going to go well. Anyway, we're going to basically end up on an island where we just have to walk right slightly before more cries a lot it's a lot of crying coming up Moore drifts ashore onto a patch of land so small it was named by a child. Who named this quiet, empty place Garnin? It was home to some birds and a cold wilderness. But for Moore, it housed a drowning sorrow. The tumultuous waters of her emotions grow rougher with every step she takes, as she bears the weight of everyone's lives upon her shoulders. It flows underneath her skin, growing as she sees everything that she knows, loves, has fought so hard for, crumble in front of her eyes, all because of something she did.
There is nothing we can do but to see ourselves for what we are. Nothing left but to finally let go. Oh, bloody hell, man. You know, I, I almost forgot. We've seen our cat or whatever this thing is supposed to be throughout the entirety of the game on our boat. Now, this is basically just Sonic the Hedgehog if you ordered him from Wish. This is just cheap Sonic the Hedgehog right here. Um, <laughs> gotta go slow. Gotta go slower, 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 slower. He's basically the opposite of everything that Sonic is. Ah, maybe in the next game we'll see um, cheap Sonic's friends. Wagger and fingers. Hmm. Hopefully. No one is an island. More leaves the cold island for the birds. The spores are creeping in again, no matter how hard they struggle. Safan and his brothers simply cannot stem the tide any longer. Afla gone and underbroken. Centuries of labor taking their toll. She knows what must be done. So for the final act then, we now have to go back to Safan and see if he's doing all right, Lake. Um, otherwise, uh, it is just a case of get once again following until we have reached him.
Wow. So, after all that work throughout the entirety of the game, we've been playing for almost 3 hours 40 minutes, and we just decided to let him die anyway. And that was a quick death, by the way. Jesus Christ, they, <laughs> he must have been needing that death. Jeez, he's had enough of this life. Which, in all fairness, if all you're doing throughout the entirety of your life is just um, moving a big lever thing like that, then, yeah, to be fair, arms are probably knackered. Ugh, just let me go. Um, but anyway, that's it. That is the end of the game. There we go. So you can skip the credits if you so wish. And we will get the final achievement uh, on this little credit scene. So thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. I hope you enjoyed the game and I hope the guide helped as well. If you did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share with a friend as well. A uh, big shout out to all my Patreon supporters and my YouTube members as well. So thank you guys and gals so, so much does genuinely mean the world to me so thank you for that one and i will see you in the next one ba 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 big love